um, individual with a low fundraiser raises on average 25 donations, compared to someone who's taking part in you know, a charity mass event like Race of Life, who would raise um, you know, 16 donations on average. And you can see there's quite a big difference in the amount that they raise, 853 pounds compared to 439 pounds. However, then if you look at what, what they do again, whether they go on to fundraise again, the kind of the difference is reversed. So the low fundraiser, 15% of them go on to fundraise again. I think that's within within a year, as opposed to somebody who's doing the charity mass event where it's kind of a higher proportion of 19.5%. And again, you know, if you're thinking about you know, these two types of events are different, maybe the fact that the charity mass event is just a lot more fun means that that kind of individual fund uh, individual fundraisers are more likely to go back and do it again because they've been drawn in by the event as well as by wanting to raise money. So, so yeah, so they, I mean, I think, we think this is kind of a, an interesting sort of um, difference to explore further, this idea that you know, some fundraising is very individual and personal, some is kind of being basically very much driven by the charities themselves, and the charities are investing in these type of mass events are bringing in different types of people who behave slightly differently, both in terms of how much they raise at, at any individual event and then also the proportion who will go on to fundraise again. So we think, you know, charities may need to think about, you know, the types of, uh, the kind of the return to this investment in terms of the type of people who fund them. So yeah, so I think that's kind of one, one thing that we're kind of interested in pursuing further. Okay. So another thing that matters, the, the, the part of the individual's um, fundraising strategy is the target. So, you know, so most people have a target, we can kind of do some fairly simple analysis on um, how much, the, you know, what effect does the target have. So I don't think the kind of the qualitative nature of, of these findings will, will be a um, surprise to you. I guess what's nice about the quantitative research is you can kind of put some numbers on it. So I don't think it will surprise any of you that pages with a target raise more than pages with that. But you might be interested to know roughly the order of magnitude. So that £140 is about 40%. So pages with a target raise 40% more than pages without a target. So the reason pages with a target raise more is that they get more donations per page, so roughly five. So I think it's, um, yeah, I think that's, <laughs> yes. And then, um, and each, do each donation is larger, so by £2.50 on average. So I think the median donation is £10 on just giving, and the mean is about 17 So it's kind of, it's a reasonably significant uplift for pages with a target compared to pages without. There's also some really interesting behaviour around the target. So may, maybe this won't be surprising to you, so, but it's kind of interesting to kind of see it sort of visibly and to see the magnitude. So when donors arrive at a page after the target has been reached, they tend to give less on average. And the target really does influence behaviour kind of around that, kind of around the target threshold. So what I've done here is to kind of um, take the average amount of the donation kind of in the run-up to the target, and then when the target is reached, and then after the target. So a huge spike, a zero, is the donation that takes the total over the target. So there's some real evidence that people are kind of giving to hit the target. The donation to kind of hit the target is about 50 pounds bigger, so people are really kind of giving to hit the target. I mean, in a sense, you know, a large donation is more likely to take you over the target, but you, if you look at the exact amounts given, there's some real, you know, it has a real effect on, on how much people get, they want to give to hit the target. Once the target is reached, well, it's, I'm not sure how clear it is, but the, kind of the average donations after the target are kind of lower by sort of three pounds on average. So you, know, there's, you can see the kind of the effect of the target. So I mean, if you're a fundraiser, what you should really be doing is kind of setting a target and then keeping on moving it. I don't know whether that's what fundraisers do, but this is what the data tell you to do. Set a target and then move it. And hopefully the people who come to your page after you've moved it don't know that you had a previous target. But, but anyway, but that's, that's, that's what you should be doing. And that's, you know, you can see these patterns very clearly in the data. And I'm sure you all know this as one process, but it's nice to kind of see it, see it in, in, in kind of, you know, with the lines behind it. Okay, so what about personal connections? So we think this is sort of interesting to think about um, the nature of kind of social groups and how people are influenced by social groups when they when they come to give. So we know that you know when with the um, uh, kind of UK just giving, most of the fundraising behaviour is kind of people asking their friends, family, work colleagues to 
due to their page. So I, 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 I was talking to someone who was involved in Japanese just giving, and it's a completely different model, it seems. It's basically celebrities doing fundraising, and people giving uh, because they like the celebrities. And I, I know there's sort of some of that in kind of marathons and, and in the UK, but I think it's it's much more a kind of you know a social a social phenomenon where you're kind of supporting the people who you who are your friends, family, and colleagues in their fund, in their fundraising behaviour. So you can see, so we in our survey we kind of asked people who'd given, kind of what who, who had asked them to give, and you can see you know almost everyone's been asked by a friend, almost everyone's been asked by a colleague and a family member. Lots of people have also been asked to give by a charity representative, but you can see people are much much less likely to respond. So the personal ask from someone you like is very effective at kind of increasing increasing uh, the likelihood that you give. Um, yeah. So. And, yeah, so I mean that, as I said, I'm sure, I'm sure you know that there's some kind of numbers to sort of back it up. So the question we've been asking is, um, you know, how, you know, so we know, for example, across people that the kind of the size of their social groups varies enormously. Some people, you know, they really don't have many friends, family, or colleagues that they can ask, whereas some people have huge <coughs> social networks that they can, you know, kind of ask to, to support them. So we were interested in whether this makes a difference. You know, so if you're somebody who has a kind of relatively small social group, how does that affect how much you kind of raise relative to somebody who has a much bigger social group? If you're a very popular person with lots and lots of friends, big family, lots of colleagues, does that make you a more successful fundraiser? So we've been asked, we've been kind of trying to look at this by exploiting the fact that we know in just giving um, how big people's social networks are by the, the number of their Facebook friends, which is kind of correlated with of their real social group and it's also a legitimate kind of group that they're targeting. So if you look in the uh, Just Giving data, there's kind of big variation in the number of Facebook friends that Just Giving uh, fundraisers have. So the 10 percentile, so the bottom sort of 10 percent, the smallest 10 percent, uh, the number is 82. So they have 82 Facebook friends. Um, the median is 251, which is I think pretty similar to the UK average. And then there are some people who have huge numbers of friends. The 75th percentile is 701, and the maximum is well over 1,000. Um, so there's this variation. You know, there's somebody going to kind of 80 friends, and there's someone going to 700 friends. And we are interested in, you know, if, you're, if you know that you're part of a big group, do you behave differently as a donor compared to if you're part of a, a smaller group? How does that actually affect fundraising? So we had this kind of running title, you know, can you be a successful fundraiser with, with few friends? Um, as to kind of think, think about the issue. So we do find that the size of the fundraiser's social group, measured by the number of Facebook friends, it makes a difference. So people with larger social groups receive more donations, although it takes an awful lot of Facebook friends to extract one extra donation. So if you have 250 compared to 100 Facebook friends, so that's kind of moving from the 10th to the median, you get one more donor. So it takes a lot of Facebook friends to actually get one of them to... To, to, to give to your cause. What's interesting is that the average donation size is smaller. So if you have a bigger social group, every person in your social group gives less to your fundraising page. So we can kind of think about that as the average. So the average donation to your page is lower. It's £1.30 smaller if you, part, if you have this kind of bigger group of friends compared to a smaller one. So we did think, well maybe you, know, you have some friends who are very close to you and then you know, you're just adding marginal donors on who kind of tend to give less and this brings down the average. But I don't think that's what's happening because we find even the first donation to the page is smaller and the maximum donation to the page is smaller. So if, you have a, if, you have a, if you're a part of a larger group, the evidence really suggests that every single member of your group um, gives less. You know, if you have a lot of friends, each of them will give less to you. So I, mean, I think this is kind of quite interesting. So uh, why, you know, why is this? Um, well, you know, so I think there are some possible explanations that make sense. So if you have a, you know, if you have a bigger group, then each individual donor matters less. In a small group, each individual donor matters more, and so you know, they, they respond by giving more. It may also be that personal connections are stronger in smaller groups. You know, if you have a few friends, you will take time to invest in those friendships, and you know, because you have more time for each, and it may well be that in smaller groups, friendships is stronger. And it may also be that if you are fundraising with a small amount of time, you can just invest more effort in fundraising. And so you know you give a bigger appeal to your smaller number of friends and they respond by giving you more back. So I mean so the bottom line is that you know so you can be a successful fundraiser even if you don't have very many friends because the friends you have will give you more and that compensates for the fact that fewer people give. So if you look on average it kind of balances out. So we wondered, you know, is this driven by the targets? Everybody just has to hit their target? Well, no. Those relationships hold even on pages without targets. 
and the way people in social groups respond when a fundraiser makes an ask. And in smaller social groups, the response seems to be stronger. And I think that's kind of interesting to kind of think about the, the personal connections in, in this type of fundraising behaviour. Okay, so um, finally I'm going to talk a little bit about donors. Um, so uh, we, we're gonna, I'm going to tell you about gender and also um, give you the numbers on how donors respond to uh, other people's <coughs> donations on just giving on just giving pages. So I, I think there are some really interesting differences across genders in, in giving. So we know, you know women are more likely to give, and but they tend to give less to each uh, each charitable cause that they support. And this really seems to be um, uh, sort of. Uh, replicated in terms of kind of just giving and how uh, male and female donors kind of give on just giving pages. So the, the majority, so we, uh, we kind of assign gender based on the name of the person <coughs> who, who gave. So we no, we can kind of do this in most cases. Most people when they give through just giving, give a name, we can then kind of work out roughly what gender they are and so we can kind of figure out what proportion of donors are men and what proportion of donors are women and whether they behave differently. Um, so if you can even look at the full sample, so you can see that 40% of um, all donations are made by women, 30% are made by men, and just under 10% are anonymous. So that doesn't add to 100 because there are some where we don't know the gender because they have uh, you know, non-gender specific names, and there are also some where they're a group, so we don't assign a gender. But you can see that so more donations are given by women than are given by men. I mean, it's kind of interesting if you look at, so that's the kind of the black bars, the blue and the red bars break down the gender of the donors by the gender of the fundraisers. So the blue bars are kind of male fundraisers, so they, you know, slightly more of their donations come from men than from women, but, you know, women still respond quite a lot when a male fundraiser asks them to give. And then the red bars are uh, kind of the gender breakup of donors uh, for female fundraisers. So you can see that when a woman asks, you know, it's a woman raising money, she's likely to get many more donations from women than, 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 than from men. So it's really, you know, so women respond quite a lot to um, male fundraisers, whereas clearly kind of women respond more to female friend fundraisers and they respond a lot more than, than the men do. So it's a kind of really a differential response to kind of, I think, kind of who's asking um, that kind of explains, um, explains the differences between kind of men and women in terms of you know, why women are, are, are overrepresented among the donors relative to men. So we find, as in kind of ge the general population of kind of givers, that female donors tend to give less on average, so they're sort of more likely to give, but tend to make smaller donations. So they're kind of spreading their giving across a sort of wider, a wider number of people. And that's kind of very typical of the sort of general behaviour you find in the population when you look at differences between men and women. Okay, so finally there's kind of evidence on uh, people responding to other other behaviours. Right, so this is kind of similar to the kind of pictures I was showing before. So I look at donations before and donations after. So these, you know, so taking advantage of the fact that donations occur sequentially on a page. And so 